Yeah, we're uh, going to introduce Daryl here to you. How many of you know Daryl? All right, good. What about the rest of you? I'm just curious. <laughs> I, I just Don't met Daryl a couple seconds ago, and uh, and then we were in the back room, did a commercial at Peter Road, and I don't know why, man, people have been hitting the Chamber of Commerce, and they want Daryl to go to Hollywood. So, Daryl, this is your chance. Get with the team, and let's get him in Hollywood. Give him a big hand for Hollywood, Daryl. First of all, when you decide to participate in an expo, you really need to have a vision of what you're looking to do. Uh, and a vision leads to your goals, developing the plans, and your actions. And the definition that we have here, vision is a clear mental image of the end result. So it's kind of like beginning with the end in mind. You've heard all that before from the seven habits. Begin with the end in mind. So you have a clear vision of what you, what you expect, what you want to, to, to achieve at the expo. And any marketing strategy that you have, you want to have a vision of what the result is going to be. And then you develop your goals from there, a result toward which the effort is directed. Pretty straightforward. And from there, you develop your plans, the steps to achieve the goals. And then from there, where the rubber really hits the road, are your actions. What activities are you using to execute the plans you developed? <clears throat> Having a proper expo marketing plan. And I like to use, I'm going to go this chart here just to uh, illustrate a point. I like this chart because it really drives the point home. This is the Parthenon that was built, I think, roughly 2,500 years ago. Still standing, see some scaffolding in the background there that they're you know, still trying to um, make some repairs to it. But would you say this is built on a solid foundation? <laughs> it's been there a long time. Still a little worse for wear, but it's been there for a long time. Well, if you consider your marketing plan, like they considered the Parthenon when they built it, you want to have a good, solid foundation. So if this is your marketing plan, each one of these pillars is a marketing strategy that supports your overall plan. So whether your marketing strategy is direct marketing, you know, whether it's e-marketing, whether it's telemarketing, whether it's social media, whether it's attended the expo. They're all strategies to help support your overall marketing plan. So if you keep that in mind, the marketing plan or the, the expo, attending the expo, is not an all-in-one deal. It's something that supports what you're trying to do as a business. Make sense? All right. This is, so if you keep that in mind, that's something that really helps me illustrate a point to you. So the first thing you want to look at is Developing a budget. How much are you spending? What are your resources look like when you're attending the expo? And that's something that you sit down with your team and you try to develop early on. <clears throat> Who are you targeting? What is your target market? It can't be everybody. Or if it is everybody, um, you're going to drive yourself kind of nuts. So you need to narrow in. You know, who's your target market? Who are you trying to appeal to? What do you wish to achieve? At the end of the expo, what are you trying to come away with? Do you want to sign the big deal at the expo? Do you want five new clients at the expo? Realistically, that probably is not going to happen. But it's a good way to develop relationships. It's a good way to get your name and your business out there. It's a really good way to get some exposure. So you need to understand to yourself, to your team, what do you, want, what do you wish to achieve in the, with the expo? Promotional items. This is leading up to the expo. How do you advertise yourself? How do you inform your target market that you're going to be in? How do you get them to come out? Do you direct mail, sponsorship, activity, uh, internet? The list can go on and on. But whatever best fits you and your business is something that needs to be considered as well. Make effective use of social media. Now, there's a lot to be made of social media. A lot of people have gotten into social media. But definitely look at what your target market is, is doing. If your target market is not into social media, you need to adjust you know, how much involvement you really have in social media. And that's just something to consider. It's all things just to consider. Giveaways that work. Now, I couldn't find it, but there was a picture I had where 
people walk to expos just looking for giveaways. And I've seen pictures of people walking through the bags and stuff. They want to take home. They can care less about your business. They want to know what you have, what frisbees you have, what toys you have, that they can take home and, and give to their kids. Well, <laughs> you need to decide what type of giveaways do you want to give away. And do you want to give away to everyone? Now, one thing to consider is to, to as you're attracting people to your booth, you may have some things that everybody can come by and have access to. But to your main target, people that you have a, a meaningful conversation with, you may have that off to the side that you can hand to them and you can keep track of who this went to. And it helps you with your follow up as well. And so that's one way to, to look at that. So you always consider, you don't want to give away things and when you walk away and say, you know, I spent all this money at the expo, and what did I get back for? So really be judicious when you decide what you're looking to give away. Selecting the right staff member for booth duty. Now, everybody is not the same. Okay, I'm not saying that to put anybody down, but there's some people that are introverts, and to put them in, in a booth to be outgoing and talk to your potential clients, you know, it may not be the right staff. <coughs> so you need to know your staff. The ways to do that, you know your staff right better than anyone else. Understand the strengths. Understand what they need. You know, some. Uh, it's not their strengths, but you want to have people in the booth that are a little more outgoing, a little more interactive with people, and can talk about your products and services very well. So. And this is kind of mundane, create a booth setup and tear down plan. But it really it can be a headache to set up a booth after four hours, now you got to tear it down. Who's going to do that? Is it just you? You know, are you have a team of people to do it, or if you expect someone to do it, you haven't told them they go home early, and you're there late until <laughs> nine o'clock trying to turn your booth down, that can be kind of frustrating. Okay, so it's good to have a, a plan ahead of time to understand who's going to be doing what. This makes it a lot easier for you. Now, during the expo, booth staffing, training. You want to have people, uh, your staff that are trained to talk very well about your products and services. They can be engaging with people, uh, dressing the part. Uh, again, dress for your business. You know, what I see a lot of times people dress, uh, you, you wear you know, similar polo shirts. You know, Tim and his staff here has a good example of that today. This is what they just, when people are behind your booth, when people come up to your booth, they know exactly who they're talking to. Uh, there's no confusion as to who's in your booth. And y'all look alike, and <laughs> asking good questions. It's good to know what your potential clients are looking for, and you may go and jot these down. Just find out what do you want to learn from the expert. What do you want to learn from the people that come to you to your booth? How do you get that information? Ask good questions about you know what are they trying to do? How can we help you? You know what are you trying to achieve in your business? How can I be of service to you? Those types of questions are, are very good to get information you know, from potential clients for you. Uh, listen more, talk less. You know, a lot of times we'll get behind the booth. I've done trade shows over the years. And the first thing you want to do is tell everybody everything you know about your products and services. And you're not listening to anything where people are trying to tell you or ask you, and you're not getting anything in return. So the next day you go back home, you go back to your office, you say, well, I didn't want to get anything out of the expo. Why is that? Because I talk, to, talk too much. So we want to be sure that, again, listen more, talk a little less. Uh, but this is a big one, avoid sitting. Now, four hours on the floor, it's kind of tough. Uh, but it's good to have a team to be able to rotate through. Some of these that may be a little larger. You know, we have a few people that come into your booth and help you out. You maybe you know, switch up every 45 minutes or so. But you want to be a welcoming target, if you will, for people coming up to your booth. And instead of, if you're sitting down, you're not as welcoming. People don't really know who you are. 